Okay, so you're in an elevator with a fat man. A man with really, really bad breath, and then a guy whose nose has been like completely eaten away by cancer. And you have to have sex with one of them. Who do you choose? The fat one. Totally. I'm in the groove. Kate never asked for much. Katie, how's the world? Actually, it sucks. Uh, uh, well, I might lose this happy but she did expect a little more for her sweet 16. You're staring at my breasts. Oh, hey, you should come to the Tabernacle later. We've got Revival Music for Christ at 7. Oh, and clog dancers tonight. Hey, Darby. Mm. Aren't you forgetting something? It's my birthday. It's my birthday. It's my birthday. Happy birthday. It's a stun gun to protect you. Don't want anyone to say it. Say what? Sweet 16 and never been kissed. Jesus. You've never been kissed? <laughs> <laughs> You've never been kissed. It's not a big deal. I heard about the kiss. Now, instead of having a birthday to remember... Oh, hey, I'm gonna have sex with Harley. She's doing a lot of things. You didn't even like giving Harley a blowjob. Having sex is way more intimate. No, it isn't. She'd rather forget. Ow! Maybe a place like this doesn't appreciate a girl like you. Are, are you trying to say that I'm not gonna get kissed? Oh, oh, this birthday so sick. But at the end of the day, what, what are you doing? You guys are sick. It's not about what you did, but who you did it with. Don't you like breaking rules, Kate? You can have great romance, but die young. Or you can have no romance. I just want to be kissed. <gasps> and live to 100. Die young after great romance. Me too. Sixteen to life. You probably never even masturbated. I've masturbated. A lot. What? I don't like your attitude. How nice to meet you. You are wonderful in this film. Thank you so much. It's nice to meet you as well. Yeah. So you play Bobby. I play Bobby, a small town cop. I play the son of Teresa Russell's character, Louise, who owns the ice cream stand that Holly Hirsch, Hirsch's character Kate, works at. And so I'm definitely a cop with a chip on his shoulder. Uh, my mother, uh, Louise, Teresa Russell, she inherited the ice cream stand and a bunch of money from her mother, my grandmother, and I feel like that she should use the ice cream stand for much more lucrative purposes like a paintball court or storage sheds. There's something other, anything other than a seasonal ice cream stand, which is, you know, for me is asinine, if I can say that's a good word, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Asinine. So, um, so I'm always showing up at very inconvenient moments and giving her hard times, things like, you're holding that trash receptacle too close to the uh, too close to the ho public highway. But what's nice, and, and the way that Becky Smith wrote this script, was that at the end of it, you really get a chance to see how these two characters' relationship really is and what it's really all about. You know, it's it's, it's an opportunity to show that Bobby's not just sort of one layered and one dimensional. He actually has a couple layers to him, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to do the role. When I read it, I was like, there's a character that seems one thing on the outside, but to the inside, he really just has this bad relationship with his mother, which causes him to act out and use his power. Yeah. 
Well, you know, when we first met here, I didn't recognize you as Bobby. You look different without the police hat on, and, and you, you have a big smile. You don't smile a lot in the film, do you? No, well, I, I actually tend to play, like, the guy who dies, or the guy that, like, in Pearl Harbor, I drowned, and I played uh, an ep a character on Cold Case where I play this grungy guy with pink hair and eyeliner on, and I get accused of murdering somebody. So I'm, I, I'm sort of evolving into the, like, you killed somebody character, but I use, <laughs> I tend to die a lot. I just finished a movie called The Apocalypse According to Doris, it's a dark comedy, and I play an extraterrestrial believing virgin in that, and I die at the end of that, so. to Life is a great movie. Was it fun for you? Absolutely. Uh, it was the first SAG film that I did, the first SAG signatory film in which I had a supporting role, so that was uh, a good opportunity for me. But surely, that the uh, in terms of just being fun, it was. It was probably the best uh, cast and crew that I've been involved with together uh, since I've been doing stuff on camera, which is just a couple of years, but nonetheless an important uh, consideration. So what made it a great cast and crew? Um, Down-to-earth people, bottom line. Uh, even though the production crew came in from Los Angeles, there wasn't a, I hate to generalize or stereotype people uh, being from one area, but uh, there was no uh, quote unquote Los Angeles mentality among the people that were there. It was a very um, uh, uh, collaborative, genuinely, um, uh, there was a genuine desire for everybody to get the work done and do it well. So um, that's what I'll say about it. Yeah. <laughs> well, that sounds good. So, in the movie Sixteen to Life, you play a character a lot of people would not find a very admirable guy. I don't was find that very admirable <laughs> either? Yes, that's true. Yes. Is, was it hard to play someone like that? I wouldn't say hard. You know, as far as I'm concerned, when it comes to taking on a role, whether it's uh, similar to me or not, you know, the bottom line is I'm there to communicate with people, speak the lines that have been given to me, and just do them honestly. And as long as I do that, there's no difficulty involved. Well, so this film was shot in McGregor, Iowa. Do you have a background um, that comes from Iowa? I do. I, I, I lived around the States as a, as a kid, uh, but most of my childhood, I could probably say, was spent in Iowa, in eastern Iowa. Um, so, and, and actually uh, close to a, a river city. Um, so I am very familiar with the Mississippi area and kind of all of the, the ecotypes that come along with it. I'm a biologist, so I'm kind of concerned with areas as... Uh, you know, what they offer in terms of forests, prairies, things like that, uh, proximity to water and things. So yes, so very familiar with the Mississippi Riverside uh, communities in Iowa, uh, but never been up to the Northeast in particular. It's a lot more of a, uh, a cliffy, you know, bluff area with uh, more forests, whereas the southern parts are a little bit more of a plains or prairie type of area. Yeah. Not that you care about that, but I just... I do care about that. Too. Well, you know, actually, the thing that's wonderful about that is when you watch the film, you see amazing scenes of the Mississippi, and it's that, shot that's in the true. falls. They, so did, they did a very good job, in my opinion, of capturing uh, some of the beautiful aspects of the Iowa countryside. I, I shot a film a couple of summers ago, a little indie flick with a guy working for HBO there for, um, uh, for a few years and wanted to start his own production company and, uh, you know, start his own films and things like that. And he, he, he shot this film called Farm Boy, in which I played the farm boy and, and, and whatnot. And uh, the reason that he wanted to shoot a film in Iowa was because he was tired of seeing everybody from California or elsewhere shooting a film about Iowa, making it about meth addicts and things like this, because there's a lot of meth production here, a lot of methamphetamines and things. So he just wanted to come and, uh, you know, shoot some of the more uh, kind of down-home, down-to-earth aspects of living in Iowa as a child and whatnot. So uh, he came by, shot a lot of this, uh, you know, the countryside, the combines in the, in the fall, the harvest, et cetera, et cetera. And in this film, they did a little bit of the same. You know, they, they, they did a good job of portraying Iowa in a, with, with its beautiful qualities as opposed to, yeah, yeah. Well, so do you live in Hollywood now? I don't. I, I'm planning on moving, not necessarily to Hollywood, but somewhere in Los Angeles for sure in about a couple of years. Right now I'm in the process of starting my own theater company because I'm a stage actor also. I live in uh, close to Des Moines, I live in Ames where I graduated from college and um, starting a theater company called Mooncoin Entertainment uh, named after the town from where my I Irish grandfather emigrated 60 years ago and um, I'm going to showcase the complete works of this Irish playwright named Martin McDonough. So I, uh, this is a two-year project, it'll be five plays starting this fall ending in the spring of 2011. 
so that I have to devote a, a full two years for that. And once that's done, then I can move out to Los Angeles. That's a huge project to it take on as a young. It is a huge project, but a very